It's not how you're supposed to sit. You said I had to hold a pencil in my back. Right, just enough pressure so the pencil doesn't fall. You're not supposed to break the pencil. You're trying to turn the carbon. If I try to hold a pencil with my with my shoulder blades, I look like a freak. Well, imagine it's a bigger pencil. You. That you... <laughs> Hi. Because you look nice. <laughs> yes, thank you. I like uh, your new swanky stools. I got new swanky stools. But anyway, my name is Steve Houston. There might be actually some guests. If there were guests, they probably already changed the channel. <laughs> my name is Steve Houston. I have Angela. Say hi, Angela. Hi. Back in the studio today, and uh, welcome to the channel. If you are brand new to this channel, we talk about basically all things related to financial services, their products, uh, their compensation plans, the IMOs. We compare the different IMOs. We go through all of that stuff, um, and we're certainly open for a conversation. Text, email, give us a call. Our number and content information is in the description. But the standard here is, is that where we talk about if we have documentation, we supply it, and at the end of the day, it's up to you to decide what's best for you. Anyway, this week we're going to continue the series, Angela. We were comparing because you have a real estate background, but you actually were in the business of real estate and we were, we kind of left the last video off. This, this is part two of part one. So if you haven't watched the other one, go watch it. It's mortgage station versus real estate, I think it was. And we're going to continue that today and we're going to talk more about the numbers. So talk about what the cost is of doing the real estate business. You know, one of the things that one of the things that when you start looking at the differences between you know the real estate versus mortgage protection or life insurance is y your cost of entry at the very very beginning you know just to get to the starting point is really the same you have to go through hmm. you know a licensing course you the state requires that you put in a certain number of hours the state requires that you take a test do your fingerprinting so you've got a couple hundred dollars you know either way the difference is that with um, with real estate, your, your costs to actually then be in the business and be at the point where you can actually transact a real estate deal are, in my opinion, they're unbelievable. And I have to be honest, I didn't, I wasn't anticipating them when I got my real estate license. Um, I figured there would be, you know, fee, fee for this, fee for that, you know, right. but I wasn't anticipating that they were going to be as high as they were. And we're talking about, you know, depending on the state that you're in, could be a few hundred dollars a month up to, you know, if you're doing some advertising, which you kind of have to do, you know, five hundred, a thousand dollars a month, and you're not selling anything yet. You're, right? I mean, you're spending that money. Monthly every single month yeah in order to have the you know a metro list key which is an access key so that you can get into different properties to show your clients that haven't bought anything yet that's in california that's a couple hundred dollars a month okay so you've got about 150 to 250 dollars a month just to have access to that key because you also have to join the associations within the state or within your county so you're looking at um you know, I think that the starting point for those associations was somewhere between five hundred and a thousand dollars to get started, and that you know, and you pay some of those dues annually, some of them monthly. But you have at minimum, a f probably between two and five hundred dollars a month going out. And again, that's before you've done any advertising or um, really been able to let anybody know that you are in the real estate business. Um, and you don't have that when you are in the in the insurance business, and I think that that is um, it can take a lot of people out. There were m multiple times in my real estate career where it took me out, where I would go months and I I didn't have a listing or I didn't have anybody buying a home, and but I still had I still had money funneling out of out of my pocket. That at some point you kind of have to call you know uncle and say, I don't, where, where am I going to keep getting this money Well, I think the, finan the, the, the financial side is important because if, if, if I'm the mortgage station guy, I'm representing the industry and you're representing the real estate industry. And in comparison, your costs are, are about the same up front, maybe. Right. Except for the fact we don't have to join all those associations. So right. you have that up front cost just to, get the, just to get your key. Right. And of course, a lot of these companies won't even hire you. It's made, they make it mandatory that you're part of these associations to, be, to actually work for the broker. Right. So it's really not an option. So you have those it's not ongoing really an option because the state requires it. Yeah, right. So you have th those going on. On the mortgage section industry side, we really don't have any ongoing costs 
other than continuing education costs every couple of years, but you have that too. We have that too. So every few years you have to renew your license, you have to go through the CE credits, you have to buy a course. And again, that kind of stuff, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you, but I don't know about everybody else. I don't really factor that stuff in because I figure that um, I want to be able to transact business that's of a high, either on either real estate or, or insurance side, uh, that is of a high value that requires you to interact with another person in their home on a one-on-one -on -one basis and mm. the state has no way to know what's going on in that situation. And so for them to require you to do that continuing education to make sure that ethically you are still kind of on par, you still kind of know the rules, that kind of stuff, I, I, don't, I don't factor that in because I think that that should be, a stand, that, that should be something that, you have to, that you're yeah, required to. I agree. So let's talk about commissions. We got, we, got, we got three parts so, here. So talk about the commissions for a second. I mean, they're, 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 they're vastly different. I think. They're vastly different. And, but here's the difference. Um, you know, some certain things, and I was thinking about this, and I don't want to make this a really long answer. Um, there are certain things in our lives that have a, um, you know, the higher the cost are things that we don't necessarily do as often. Things that have a low cost, like a commodity, are things that we typically do a lot of, right? So you don't pay, you don't pay $100 for a gallon of milk. You pay a couple dollars for a gallon of milk. You pay, you know, a dollar for a dozen eggs. You, because you... you you're going you're gonna to utilize it, and it's going to be gone. Mm -hmm. But a car or a home, you're going to pay tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars, but you're only going to do that a few different times throughout your life, okay? On real estate versus insurance, it's kind of, it's somewhat of a similar mentality. On a real estate transaction, you are not going to, you're not going to sell five, six, eight, ten homes a week like you will on the insurance side. On the real estate side, you may only sell one home a month or a couple homes a month or a couple homes every couple of months, right? So the commission on that is higher. You have a higher commission when you sell a house. Lower commission in relation when you sell an insurance policy. However, your opportunity to make more consistent sales on a more consistent basis on the insurance side is huge. Um, and I think that that's where people get confused sometimes. People that are, that don't really understand the concept of the real estate business. I used to have friends that, we had family members that actually mm -hmm. have said this to us. You know, um, we would talk about, you know, we were going to wait on doing something because we were waiting for a couple of homes to close or something along those lines. And they would say, well, yeah, but you know, you're making all this big money. Or I would be complaining about a real estate transaction right. and... You know, and they would say, well, yeah, but you make, you, you know, real, realtors make big bucks, right? When well, you sell that home, you're going to make what? They watch too much TV. They, they watch way too much TV. made our listing and they're driving around in Bentleys. Right. It's not they the business. They shouldn't list in the general. commissions on, that, on shows like yeah. that because it's a little bit misleading. Um, and they spent know, years to get to that point, too. Right. The average realtor is not going to do that. You're going to sell, if you're, in my opinion, if you're lucky, a couple homes a month. And, you know, couple... Yeah, I think, I, think the, I think the national statistics is that average realtor sells a couple homes a year. Yeah, that's probably... It's very realistic. low. It's a huge part-time business, so here's my So here's my analogy when you're kind of comparing the two. Um, if you sell a couple of homes a year, right, you could be faced with going by the time that transaction goes through escrow, which is 30 to 60 days, if you're lucky, and then by the time you get paid, by the time you pay all of your expenses to transact that deal, right, you're going to have transaction coordinator and assistance and all this kind of different stuff and marketing and signage and all that stuff that's going to go into it. So by the time you fa factor all that, it could be anywhere from, I would say, 60 to 90 days before you get paid on that transaction. You have to take that commission. So let's just say that you, get, you make a 9000 you clear a $9,000 commission on that sale. Factor that over three months. That was only $3,000 a month, right? That's not a great... That's on average thirty six thousand dollars a year. That's not that's not a stellar um, income. On the insurance side, you can go out. I mean, you and I go out and we write policies, give or take, every night of the week. Yeah, you should five, write six days a week. And sometimes two or three. Well, again, in mortgage section, it may be one lead, but it's usually two sales. How many times do you go into a home where there's a couple 
that you don't write both couples. You know, it's pretty rare that you're going to go into a home and not write both couples. Um, I do it maybe tw 25 or 40 percent of the time. You know, I had a sale the other day where the, hus the husband was unemployed and on disability, and he wasn't he wasn't bringing in any income to the so home. Talk about the fact that commissions are more regular is why you got in this business or why you transferred over from the real estate business anyway. Oh, without question. I mean, when you have the opportunity to make, you know, a, a, a real estate commission or transaction, you know, maybe a couple of times a month if you're really lucky, more like a couple of times a year, um, as opposed to in this business where you're gonna where you're gonna go out on a day on a on a nightly basis and sit with couples, and you could write, you know, policies and get paid multiple times a week. Um, that's a huge difference, and that was it was the, it was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Well, people. talk about that too. We get paid, I mean, seventy-two hours on a non-med, no uh, a no exam uh, policy. I mean, it could take up to a week on the fully underwritten ones where you're going to do blood work. It takes a little longer. But how long does it take to get your money for the real estate? Oh, you're probably looking at. I mean, on the on the uh, even on a really easy, clean transaction, a standard transaction, you're you're easily thirty to forty-five days. I would. Okay, that's where I want to dive into. The point is that when you make the sale, you met me, we look at a condominium or a house, whatever, I sign the paperwork. If, in comparison to mortgage protection, had I signed a paperwork and a policy, I'm getting paid three to five days out. Worst case scenario, maybe 30 days out if I'm pulling blood work. In real estate, you just began the transaction. Right. You could have, how, how long are these escrows going to last? I mean, it could be if somebody wants a longer escrow or, you know, again, the standard, the norm is going to be, you know, 30 to 45 days before you get paid. The average, I would think, you know, the, you know, if there's any glitch is going to be 45 days, 90 days, 60 days, 90 days. That's a long time. Yeah. To wait I mean, to get paid. Right. And then it could fall out of escrow. And we have cancellations right. too. So I guess if you're comparing the two industries, if I wrote a Something policy and it canceled, wrong. I mean, things can go wrong. But generally speaking, in mortgage section, if they're going to go wrong, they're going to go wrong much sooner. Right. I mean, you've had escrows that went on for three, four, five months and then fell out. Yeah. And you've earned, that means you've earned nothing, nothing with all that paperwork exchange. All right, so let's talk about clients. In mortgage section, I mean, all, everybody's my client, which is right. the same in real estate. I mean, pretty much everybody's, everybody's going to buy a house, rent a house, whatever, right? Right. So you, have, you, could, you could prospect to anybody is, is, is right. the point. And when you're out and about in terms of doing cold market, anybody you meet is potentially a prospect. We can right. agree on that, right? So that's the same in, in mortgage station. And then I can buy leads to get myself in front of clients more often. So that's my advertising cost. Right. In real estate, you have advertising costs too, but, but what else do you have? Talk about the clients, repeat, referral. You know, talk about the clients for a second in comparison. You know, I think that in, you know, in the real estate side, you're going to have you're going to sell someone a home and the chance of you selling them another home or someone, you know, in their immediate household, another home. Good point. Is going to be, I mean, you're not looking, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to get a year from now in most cases and something has changed in their life and they go, you know what, I need to buy a third home or a second home or, you know, I, I need to buy another house. I have to sell this house and buy another house. So that's going to be more rare. You know, in, in the insurance side, on the mortgage protection side, you know, it's very common that somebody will do a refi and need to change their policy. Yeah. Somebody gets, um, you know, somebody, their increase, their income goes up or the kids are, um, they have another child or, you know, there's a life change. There's all kinds of life changes that can pre precipitate an insurance change. But there's, there's only a couple of things that's going to really going to really, you know, induce it's, it's, it's not as much of a life changing event either. I mean, you can, I mean, I have, at last time I counted what, five, six, mm -hmm. seven policies. Mm -hmm. I mean, rarely are you going to sell someone five, six, seven homes, maybe over a lifetime. Right. With this business, you can sell, potentially sell somebody a policy once or twice a year. Right. Right. And then you have the referrals. Mm -hmm. So the referrals are going to, are more available too, because again, it's a different type of sale. Right. People can afford a hundred dollars a month or fifty dollars a month for a more, and they should, for mortgage protection or life insurance or final expense, where they may not even be anywhere near being able to afford buying a house. Right. Right. In fact, we meet with people all the time that are very young that know that they need life insurance because they need to make sure that their income is protected for their spouse, but they don't own a home and don't have any prospects of buying a home. Yeah. So. 
So let's talk about that. The average, the average sale, I mean, I don't know. You, you, you've done home sales enough to know, I mean, what's the average? I mean, there may be an average. What's, what's the average commission or the average sale? $200,000 home, $300,000 home, $400,000. Okay, so let's just take $250,000 house. What would be the average commission on that? So um, $250,000 home, I think when it was all said and done, maybe maybe four or five thousand dollars right and you're taking months potentially to make that sale go through right. what does it take to make four or five thousand dollars here in mortgage edition? i think you know in my opinion i think that that you should you should and can do that every two weeks i don't see why you couldn't part-time yeah very part-time if you were working at full-time and really running the amount of appointments you know on a daily basis you know and working at like a career like a job you could do that on a weekly basis. You should do that on a weekly basis, yeah. without question. So we've done a pretty good job comparing it to, I think that's probably it. We don't, I don't think we need to talk about it in a third video. And really, it's not, it's not about being negative on the real estate industry. No, I think it's I really, industry. I, I, I do too. And I also think you can do real estate and mortgage session at the same time. I think that's really what we're coming down to is we have a lot of real estate agents on our team that, uh, that do both. And I think that's, that's a good mix because it's the same consumer. Right. Right? Absolutely. What are your final thoughts? I, I agree with you on that. And I think that somebody who has the independent mindset of being in real estate will have the same, it's the same mindset, the same types of activities, that same kind of consistent, you know, persistent activities. It just rewards you better here, I think, or, you know, faster. I think it's, I think that's really what it comes down to. I think it's hard as a, in real estate to put on, you know, after a while it gets difficult to, to keep putting out money on a, on a such a large well, basis. The mortgage station and final expense commissions could pay for your real estate career. Right. I mean, in terms of all the fees you have to pay on the, yeah. more on the real estate side. And so you could still sell, you know, two, three, four, five, six homes a year. Right. You know, and make another hundred grand or whatever it is. I don't know if you make that much, but make, make another, you know, whatever it is, a hundred grand or so, um, a year, but you can make 20 grand a month mortgage section. Right. And again, it's the same policy. So if you're going to sell them a house, why couldn't you sell them a, mortgage section right then and there. Absolutely right. Not the kind of mortgage section they buy from the realtor or the escrow office, our kind, which is a term life policy with some disability living and living benefits attached to it, not mortgage section insurance. If you know more about that, you can go over here to this video and find out about what the difference is between PMI, MPI, and life insurance. Because some people, I, I had that question yesterday. What's the difference between what we do and what MPI is? Big difference, I'm not gonna get into it right now. Anything else? You still hold you still hold your license? I still have my license. I still have my license. And, and hate I it. Still. <laughs> and it's funny because the last two transactions that I had had from real estate, which have been really in the course of the last eighteen months, and they were really for friends or referrals that had come to me, and you know, uh, it reminded me why I'm not. In I was going to say, it just reinforced your decision to stay over on the yeah. on the other side. <laughs> it was. All right, that's it, Angela. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Don't forget, we always say at the end of the video, the surest way to succeed is to be determined not to fail. Not to fail. Determined not to fail. Because if you're determined not to fail, then you can't quit. And you'll stay in there long enough to learn the basics and the skills necessary to succeed in this great and wonderful industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think you should do these by yourself. I'm not sure. <laughs> Tag team might work, might not work. Leave us some comments below. Let us know thumbs you up decide. or thumbs down. You decide. Should we do them together? Or should I just clear the room and let Angela talk? Uh, as always, if you haven't done the subscribe button yet, hit that. Mash that bell down below. That gets you instant notifications. Like the video. Share the video out. It would help us to 1,000 subscribers. We're very close. Yep. And make comments. As well, always, if you're looking for a coach or mentor, a place to go, uh, and you haven't made that decision yet, give me a call. We can discuss it. If you're fit to work for us, we can discuss that too. But if not, we'd love to have you on this channel and uh, engage and, and be part of the community. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.